Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech.com video, let us discuss the news that Valve Software have now officially joined the Linux Foundation Collective. This was just recently announced, and it's pretty big news. Let's let's talk about the quote first, and then we'll discuss just who else is in this Linux Foundation and what it may possibly mean. So this was from Mike Sar Sartain. I'm hoping I've pronounced that correctly. That's Mike M I K E. And then Sartain, that's S-A-R-T-A-I-N. And that's from, he's from uh, speaking on behalf of Valve. And he said, Joining the Linux Foundation is one of many ways Valve is investing in the advancement of Linux gaming. Through these efforts, we hope to contribute tools for developers. Building new experiences on Linux compel hardware manufacturers to prioritize support for Linux and ultimately deliver an elegant and open platform for Linux users. Okay, I know what you're thinking, end quote by the way. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Okay, so Valve is part of this now. Who else? You know, are they are they in this alone? Are they like the biggest supporters? Actually, no. You'd think that Valve would be, you know, one of the loftiest, and they are, definitely. No, they've got a lot of clout. However, gold members um, actually, uh, there's actually platinum, gold, and silver members of this, and they these guys are big companies. Gold members, for example, include Fujitsu, Intel, IBM, Oracle, and Samsung. Gold members include AMD, Cisco, Google, Motorola, and there's an absolute ridiculous list of silver members. These include Adobe. Broadcom, um, Dell, and so we don't exactly know right this second what Valve and the HSA Foundation, which by the way have also uh, decided to join in with this, we don't exactly know where Valve are. So we don't know what system they are. They might be silver, they might be platinum, they might be gold. Unknown yet. Regardless, it's very impressive. Okay, so who are the Linux Foundation? Well, unsurprisingly, they are a non-profit organization. They are dedicated to the growth and collaborative software de uh, development, I'm sorry, of Linux. So various distributions. They were founded actually way back in 2000, so back in the mists and the dawn of time, it would seem. And they were actually sponsored, um, sponsored the work of Linux creator. His name is Linus. Uh, Torvalds, hopefully they've pronounced that right, that's Linus, L-I-N-U-S, and then Torvalds, that's T-O-R-V-A-L-D-S, and the basic idea is that the organization is there to promote, protect, and advance the Linus operating system, um, as well as creating development resources for its members, as well as the open source community as a whole. Mike Worcester, who serves as the Chief Operating Officer at the Linux Foundation, said our membership continues to grow as both new and mature entities embrace the community development open technologies. Our new members believe Linux is a strategic investment that allows their markets to evolve as quickly as possible to achieve long-term viability and competitiveness. Now, I could go into an absolutely ridiculous, lengthy rant on the benefits of Linux and the benefits of Windows. Because let's just be clear, I use Windows pretty much a lot more than what I do Linux right now. I, however, am slowly starting to more and more use VMs, uh, virtual machines, and basically using Linux for day-to-day -day tasks, especially web browsing and stuff like that. Why? Because I honestly believe that Linux could well be the future. In gaming, it has a long way to go. And honestly, I could spend at least two or three hours talking about just the Linux side of PC gaming. Because honestly speaking, PC gaming is at the state where it's evolving, right? Um, this is part of a larger rant and honestly speaking I have to kind of formulate where I want to go with this because it's such a big topic. Here's the thing, the next generation consoles have been released. I've got a PlayStation 4, I'm going to be getting the Xbox One, bully for me, fantastic. But that's not the only thing that's changing, the PC landscape is as well. 
the PC market has started to slow down in terms of the decline. It's actually starting to stabilize. And what they're starting to notice is PC gaming is on the rise. It's going up. It's the fastest growing platform in, you know, the whole of the UK is PC. Steam, um, when we'll talk about Steam more in just a moment, Steam is massive in this. It actually logged a record number of users. In fact, there's more Steam accounts than what there is Xbox Live accounts. I want you to think about that for a moment. It's big. The market is growing, particularly with indie developers. The problem is, Windows is swallowing up a lot of that, and basically, Valve are trying to release the Steam OS. Now, there are some problems with the Steam OS, as far as I'm aware. It is pretty much targeted towards consoles. So, in other words, let's say that your you know, friend Bob is a PC gamer. The basic premise, as far as I understand it, is that uh, this is me kind of putting some words into Valve's mouth, so they haven't said this specifically. So if it turns out I'm wrong, so be it. But this is pretty much reading between the lines, their plan is to pretty much grab the, the people who are put off by complicated development, or should I say complicated options and so on with PCs. They want Steam machines to be able to provide easy, understandable access for hardware. They want the Steam OS, in other words, to be free. So that, let's say you spend 400 bucks, whatever you're spending on a new PC parts, you don't then have to think, balls, I then have to spend another 40 or 50 or 60, whatever it is in your currency for Windows, because that sucks. Sure, you can use, say, Windows 7 if you've got a retail version of it, assuming, you know, your license is okay and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if you want to use the latest version, say, Windows 8, it's a pain in the bum, okay? Um, it's not expensive, considering how long a license lasts, but it's still not ideal. Also, there are benefits of open source okay it also ha it does have some detri it does have some detrimental parts to it it's not this happy nirvana of shiny joy that a lot of people seem to be focused upon mostly that you know because there are so many different distros you can have some compatibility issues you can have some issues where you have some inconsistency there can be some patch issues and so on and so forth and so forth but the bottom line is that it's a lot easier, it's a lot easier to maintain, you can much easier program for it, you can more easily tinker with it, and also, honestly, it would probably start to alleviate some of the problems we're having with DirectX. Now, arguably, AMD's mantle would also do the same. There are, there are a lot of points that, honestly, I've missed out in this video because it's a huge topic, right? This is not one of those topics where you can speak about even in like a 30 minute video. It is gargantuan. Just the the changes that are going to be happening in the operating system. I honestly believe that Windows is not going to be replaced anytime soon. I, I don't think it will. But what I do think is that Linux is going to become you know, no longer this thing where you may know one person who's running Linux, or two people, or three, maybe your really geeky friends who are using Linux. Instead, it's going to become this, oh, okay, so you're running Linux. There are still some problems with it. There are applications that simply don't work with uh, Linux well. Wine isn't necessarily the best if you're running a lot of Windows applications. In other words, you need to rely upon them. Then... It can be a bit tricky, but it's definitely, definitely getting better. Hardware, of course, Linux drivers, especially in the mid-2000s, were pretty crap. Um, it's just not mince words, they were crappy. They're getting better. Um, you're starting to get situations where the drivers are more robust. They work better out the box. And also, the operating system itself, generally is getting to the point where you don't need to rely upon command lines so much. Obviously, this depends heavily upon the distribution you want. Now, Linux purists are going to say, but the command line's the best part of it. Ah, I agree. 
But I work as a systems maintenance slash web developer and so on uh, at a company. And I was actually speaking to a client today. I'm not going to give too much information. But I spent a rather lengthy amount of time, I'm going to say at least seven, eight minutes, pretty much going through with them to figure out which web browser they were having issues with. Um, I am being serious, right? I honestly, swear to God, felt like smashing my head against the desk towards like the seven minute mark because it was getting to the point where I was just like, what web browser are you using? And then they said, well, I'm going through Google. Which web browser? Is that Google Chrome? No, I'm not using Google Chrome. So which web browser are you using? You know the story. If you have anyone that's not that good with computers, you're going to go through this. And it's not their fault, right? Not everyone is going to be good at computers. They're going to be good at something else. It might be they're great at the violin, or they might be fantastic, you know, doctors, or they might be, you know, an incredible pilot or whatever. Not everyone knows this, but my point is that for Linux to evolve, it needs to not rely upon so so many, you know, heavy command line functions. This is getting better. It's no longer to the point where, you know, it's it's basically to the point where if you were to leave someone on it, they could probably do the, you know, they could they could manage. Let's just use it that way. In fact, it actually kind of works out in some ways that in some respects, such as say the top toolbar and a few other bits and bobs, it's actually kind of similar to the Mac. And I, I'm probably going to get some hatred then. Obviously, that depends on the desktop you're using. Um, you know, whether you're using GNOME or whatever. There's, you know, a lot of different um, options and different distributions and different... Um, different packages that you can use and so on and so forth. Regardless, anyway, this has gone on to a bit of a Linux rant. So I can only profusely apologize and hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.